Hey, it's Bridget with Sleepopolis, and today I'm here with John Merwin, the CEO of 3Z and founder of Brooklyn Bedding. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So the origin of Brooklyn Bedding, which is now under the 3Z name, goes back a few decades. Can you tell us a little bit about the early days? Going back to the very, very beginning, my brother started the business in around 98 and started as a liquidator. So he started selling scratch and dent, closeouts, overstock, discontinued mattresses, and he was selling them out of a Wonder Bread truck. I had ambitions of being a teacher and a, a coach. I wrestled in college and thought that that was the path that I wanted to go down. And, and I had just gotten engaged and he, he said, what, do you, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to be a teacher and a coach. And he said, after you get married, why don't you come down, move down to Arizona? And he's like, I got this mattress gig going. And so for the longest time, we were, we were liquidators. So we would buy, we were getting most of our product from Montgomery Wards. They go bankrupt. We had four retail stores. And so we're scrambling, trying to figure out where we're going to buy product. And so we go straight to Sealy and Simmons and, and just knock on their door and say, hey, we'd like closeouts, overstocks, discontinued, whatever we can get our hands on. And we started buying product from them. And it was, it was at that point that, you know, when we were dealing with them, they had some foam and they had some springs and they had some obsolete raw materials that they weren't using. It's like, hey, what, what are you guys doing with that? I said, well, it's obsolete material. What, you know, if we can't find anyone to buy it, we'll probably scrap it. And that was the point that it was like, hey, there might be an opportunity to build some beds and figure out how to make mattresses. And so that's, that's the path that we went down. Fast forward to 2008, I see my first bed in the box. And the minute that that box showed up on my doorstep, I became enamored with the idea of putting mattresses in a box and, and how they could ship this thing. I think it shipped from Salt Lake City and, and ship it right to my door. I, I started down the path of, I need to figure out how to put a bed in the box. Two weeks later, three weeks later, we're on a plane down to China and, and I designed uh, three beds and, and bought a couple containers of mattresses. And I, I remember distinctly on the flight home, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, what am, you know, why am I buying beds when I have all this money invested in equipment and I have my own factories? Like, I, you know, I need to figure out how to do this myself. And so I found a roll pack machine in Italy, flew over there, you know, looked at it, ended up taking a, a line of credit out on my house and, and bought that machine and brought it in. And that's when we started putting a mattress in a box. The very first roll pack machine I bought, you know, couldn't couldn't fold anything, you know. So we would we would cigar roll everything, and and um, and it was limited on what it could roll. And so I, li I like to think that that we kind of helped the equipment manufacturers evolve into building bigger and better equipment because I would break their equipment all the time. We'd repair it, and I'd call up the the vendor and say, hey, I need to order this. And they're like, How, you know, why are you ordering these parts? I'm like, it's breaking. I'm like, you guys need to come out and look at this thing. It keeps breaking. So then they would come out and, and they'd, they were like, well, let's see, you know, what are you trying to roll through it? And I'm like, I'm, I want to roll that bit. And they're like, oh my gosh, you can't roll that. I'm like, well, I rolled 20 of them and it, and it worked fine and then it broke. And so they would, you know, they'd go back to the drawing board and then, you know, if if I, I, if I could find pictures of the very first machine to what we have now, I mean, just night and day. And, and um, so that, that, that's just completely changed our industry. And then you were one of the first to sell said mattress in a box on Amazon, yep. which was an absolute game changer for the industry. So tell me a little bit about that. And also at the time, did anyone think you were crazy for trying to sell? bed in a box is on Amazon. Everyone thought we were crazy for, yes, for trying to put a bed in a box and, and sell it. So yeah, so we, I, I launched a bed on Amazon and, and again, you know, I didn't know any, I wasn't very good at branding and, and you know, so I took a terrible picture and figured out how to put a listing up and kind of just forgot about it. We were at the time running our retail business and, and all of a sudden I get an email across and it's, you know, sold product on Amazon. It's like, holy cow, we sold a mattress. And, and so I was like, we need to build it. And so we built it, ran it through the roll pack machine. And, and I drove it down to the FedEx station myself and dropped it off. And a couple more days go by and don't sell anything. Then all of a sudden we sold another one. 
and then a couple days later we sold another one then we got a good review and and so then those things just started toppling on top of each other i get a call from from someone from amazon so you know and they're from the marketing department they said hey you know we're 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 trying to highlight small business owners and the success that they've had on Amazon and we've noticed that you have great reviews and your product resonates with the customer and and we'd like to do a little marketing piece on you so that's great and, and they said okay on Tuesday we're gonna run this piece on the mattress page and, and you're gonna see a nice lift in business and then on Wednesday there will be a link and then it'll fall off and the next week we'll run a piece on someone else so Tuesday comes along and and I get a call from my plant manager about seven o'clock in the morning. And he said, what's going on? I said, I don't know, what's going on? He's like, Amazon, he's like, it's going nuts. He's like, we've already sold more beds than we've ever sold in a day. I said, well, I told you they were gonna run that piece. And, and he's like, yeah, but I, you didn't tell me it was gonna be like this. I said, well, let me go try to find the ad. And so I log on to amazon.com and on the homepage of amazon.com, above the fold is an ad and it's got my picture on it and it says dream foam gets your bed just right and i'm like holy you know it, we're on the home page of amazon wednesday comes and you can see the link on the home page but the ad isn't there and business was good and and the next tuesday comes and i get a call from him again and, and he's like i'm like hello and he's like it's happening again i'm like what amazon and and so i roll out of bed and I, i'm like we're on the home page again and he's like well do you think they made a mistake? Are you gonna call them? And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna call them. Like, it's Amazon. And so, long story short, for the next nine months, every Tuesday, we were on the homepage of Amazon.com. And with all of that, what do you think it is with your journey? I mean, taking the risks, sticking with the original mission, what do you think it is that has kept you successful in this space? Never losing focus on our customer, right? So, um, Ultimately, the customer is, is the number one reason that we do what we do. You know, we're trying to provide the best sleep possible at you know, great value and, and given great quality. So the other thing that, that I've, I've really focused a lot on is trying to be as vertical as possible. And so, you know, fast forward to today, you know, we do all of our own cut and sew, we make our own coils, we're pouring our own foam. Um, uh, so I, I, I just, I want to try to control as much of the supply chain as I can. Can you walk us through the process of when an order is made until it reaches the customer? Yeah, so a uh, customer will order a bed online and, and um, we'll come in and, and we'll have that order and, and the very, if not that day or the next day, it'll be put into production and, and within a day or two it'll be shipped out. Now we, we do gear up for, for holidays and we'll build inventory and and stock up for holidays, but for the most part, we're, we're made to order. So I know there are major family ties to this business. Can you tell us about where the name Brooklyn Bedding came from? Yeah, so our RNS Mattress was, RNS Mattress Liquidators was, was originally our name. And as we started to manufacture product and we were trying to sell it in our retail stores, customers would come in and they would look at a Serta or a Sealy and, and then they didn't like that. So then they would come over and look at product that we made. and. And they would ask our salesman, well, who makes it? You know, RNS Mattress makes it. And, and, and so the, there wasn't a lot of confidence in, in that brand. And so, um, you know, it was like, hey, we, we need a brand. And so we all got together in a room and, and said, you know, threw a bunch of ideas on the, on the board. And um, I, had two, I, had, I had two daughters at the time, Kaylee and Brooklyn. And I looked up brooklynbedding.com and it was available on GoDaddy. And so I bought it for $9.99 and, and I said, how about Brooklyn Bedding? And everyone kind of looked and they're like, well, that you know, kind of sounds established and yeah. And so that's what we went with. So we had some nice labels made and, and you know, started branding our product Brooklyn Bedding. And so then customers then look at the Serta Sealy, they come over, here's our factory direct brand. It's made by Brooklyn Bedding and customers are like, oh, I think I've heard of that. And it was like, well, no, you, you probably haven't, but it just, it just created a, you know, a legitimacy to, to our brand. What mattress do you sleep on and so, why? Yeah. So currently I'm sleeping on our heritage mattress. Um, but almost always I'm sleeping on a prototype and, um, it drives my wife nuts, but we'll, we'll get, a new, you know, and some new components and, 
and like, hey, let's let's build this or let's try this. And then ultimately I take it home and, and test it out and try it. And as I saw today, you are the CEO, but you're not stuffed away in an office. No, I don't like being in the office that much. I, I would much prefer to be on the floor and, and um, that's, that's where I'm most comfortable for sure. Is there anywhere on the floor that's still every time you just can't believe it or it just blows you away? Yeah, right now it's the foam. Um, just I think because it's so new and, and we're still, still learning and, and getting our feet wet with the foam production. So what's next in terms of goals and growth for 3Z? Ultimately, you know, the, the, the idea is that we learn what we, what we did right and what we did wrong with this facility. And as we continue to grow, we will need a, a manufacturing presence on the East Coast. So, um, you know, the idea is and that that's always been my plan. Um, you know, let's let's figure out what what we did well here and then and what we didn't do well. And then let's go duplicate that on, on the East Coast. All right. Well, thank you so much. And for anyone out there who wants to learn more about the many mattresses under the 3Z name, you can head over to sleepopolis.com for more in-depth reviews, but be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Bye.